I'm really excited for this one. I can't stop eating this right now. Hi folks, my name is Allie D'Andrea. Welcome back to another recipe video here on the Outdoor Solutions From Field to Table YouTube channel. Tonight we are making something very special. We are recreating Chef Albert's white pheasant stew recipe. You can find this recipe on the From Field to Table website. It will also be included in the description box down below. So you can check it out there. Um, I'm really excited for this one because this pheasant is freshly hunted this season. I was in Montana maybe a week or so ago and that's where I got these pheasant. I hunted them myself, so this is about to be a good one. Also, the mushrooms that I have are foraged here in Pennsylvania. So we got, got a lot of good ingredients to work with, but without further ado, let's jump right into this thing. First thing I'm doing before I turn the stove on and begin cooking, I need to prep all of my ingredients. So I need to chop my vegetables, I need to measure my spices, I need to prep my pheasant, and step number one is measuring my spices. Now, Chef Albert did not include measurements for the spices, so I'm going to take the liberty of doing one teaspoon of nutmeg with one teaspoon of pepper. This recipe calls for white pepper. White pepper is more expensive than black pepper because it is refined in a process that makes it a little milder than your traditional black pepper. Um, but all I have is black pepper, so it's a good substitute if you don't have the white pepper, but if you do have the luxury of getting your hands on some white pepper, I highly recommend it. There's also for chefs a visual reason to want to use white pepper aside from the taste profile of it being a little milder it also looks better in stews like this where it's primarily a white cream color you don't have the black from the pepper peeping through that makes sense so one teaspoon of nutmeg and one teaspoon of black pepper next we are chopping up our leek leeks are so beautiful um, for this, you want to chop off the top portion. Uh, some people do utilize them, but for the most part, you can just top, chop that off and discard that. Thank you. And then I'm just going to slice these into thin little circles. Um, one thing to note, the leek can get a little dirty um, because dirt can get into like all of the layers. So I have a what are these called? Colander, right? A little colander that I'll be using to rinse my leek off after I chop it. Smells so good. Actually, it is starting to make me want to cry a little bit because <laughs> it is an onion. <laughs> Next ingredient to prep are our mushrooms. So you can buy uh, like white button mushrooms, um, mini portobello mushrooms. You can get wild with some oyster mushrooms. There are so many incredible mushrooms at the grocery store. Um, but I'm going to use some chicken of the woods that I foraged for here in Pennsylvania. So this has not been rinsed. It's just been sort of cut down into manageable pieces and then vacuum sealed. So I'm going to First, chop these up into the proper size, and then I'll rinse it with my leeks. These ones definitely don't look the prettiest, like in this condition, um, but they sure do taste delicious, and I know that they are going to absorb all of the incredible flavors in this stew, which is why I felt like they were a good choice. Let's rinse. Next are our potatoes. So I've got two small russet potatoes. I'm just going to chop these into little cubes. Abby is currently <laughs> under the table, just like dying to get some crumbs. 
final to do is to break open two eggs. We are just keeping the yolks here. I've got my bowl ready and, uh, oh, wait a minute. The whites are gonna go into the bowl. Yeah, All right, two yolks. Time to prep our pheasant. Let me rinse my fingers. Here is our beautiful pheasant. There are probably about four pheasant breasts in this bag. It's been vacuum sealed. I've defrosted it, so it's about room temperature. Um, for any kind of meat, that you're cooking, it's always best to let it get to room temperature well before you start to cook with it. Um, you don't want the meat to go to, like from freezing to a hot pan because it will not turn out well. And once I get these all in the bowl, I'm gonna give them a rinse, get some of these feathers off. That's how you can tell it's real. So our pheasant is cleaned up and it's really, really important to make sure to pat your meat dry before you ever put it in a hot skillet. Um, any moisture that remains on the meat is going to essentially start to boil the meat instead of searing the meat like we want. And it's going to reduce the caramelization that occurs and caramelization equals flavor. So point is make sure that it's all very dry before you get started. Now we're gonna fire up that cast iron pan and throw some butter in it. Yeah. So we're gonna go on a medium high and I will probably quickly turn that down to medium just because I don't want to burn our butter. All right, I'm slicing up this pheasant into little cubes. So we're gonna put all of our pheasant right in there. Oh yes. Now we're adding the mushrooms and our leeks. Ooh. Now I'm adding all of the potatoes. I'm giving that a good stir. The chicken of the woods mushrooms are really giving this stew an odd vibe and an odd feeling because they're such a bright orange and typically with mushrooms you have you know shades of brown maybe a shade of white uh, but <laughs> we've got these like bright orange and yellow mushrooms it's a funky looking stew at this point because of the mushrooms so at this point we're going to add our flour we're adding a half a cup of flour and stirring that up to make a roux. And then almost immediately, we're going to add a cup of half and half and this whole 32 ounce jar of, this is bone broth, but basically any type of chicken broth or stock will work. So first let's go in with our flour. Evenly sprinkle that all over. Give this a good stir. And the butter is what's going to mix with the flour to start to make that roux. Now, let's go in with our bone broth. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh, crap. No, I'm not. No, I got this. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ooh. So we're going to stir it up. Then, Add one cup of half and half. Stir it up. Got flour on the side. So tomorrow, we are going pheasant hunting with our pup, Abby. She is not an official bird dog, hunting dog, anything. But we have taken her to the pheasant fields the past two years, just once each year. And 
last year, or the first time, the first time she wanted nothing to do with the birds. And then the second year, which was last year, she flushed like five birds. And Nick was the only shooter and he missed all of them. <laughs> um, so we're excited to go again this year because I feel like it'll be her first year where everything will actually click and she might actually flush her first bird that we shoot and then maybe she won't retrieve it, but I have high hopes that she'll pick it up, you know, and maybe bring it to us or maybe just be excited about it, but that's tomorrow. So we'll, we'll have more pheasant meat to make yummy recipes like this with, hopefully. Now I'm adding the spices, which again was a teaspoon of nutmeg, teaspoon of black pepper. I'm turning the temperature down to low, medium, low, and then covering it. This cast iron set is like my favorite. Essentially, you can use it like a Dutch oven in this way. Um, so I'm gonna leave it covered. I'm gonna simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then I'll see you guys back here. Alrighty, friends, it has been 30 minutes and we are ready to get rolling again. This stew smells so good. So first thing, I'm going to take, remember those egg yolks that we cracked earlier? We're going to take these and mix them with some heavy cream, a half a cup of heavy cream to be exact. My heavy cream, half a cup, going in with the eggs. Then I'm just going to whisk that all together. So now, I'm excited. So I've never done this before. This is called, let me make sure I'm saying it right, a liaison. So this liaison is going to add richness, creaminess, flavor, and thicken our stew. But because there's egg yolk in here, you do not want to cook those eggs. You don't want them to scramble. You don't want them to curdle. So you have to temper it, which means that you add a small amount of the liquid that's already hot in the stew, but not boiling. Gotta make sure, actually I'm gonna, I just turned my heat off for a second because the cast iron does such a good job of holding that heat. I want it to come down just a little bit. Um, I will add some of that to this mixture, stir, 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 until I feel like it's combining well and then I can add all of this into the stew, let it simmer just a little bit longer, but not boil. So basically I'll just give it a minute for all of the goodness to melt together. Um, and then we're gonna top it and do some things and then eat it, which is what I'm most excited about, because I'm hungry. So let's take a look at the stew. Ooh, baby. Yes. She's bubbly. So I'm gonna wait until it's done bubbling before I actually start on this liaison. Awesome. So the stew has cooled just a little bit. It's not boiling anymore. So I'm going to add some of this liquid and then temper it in. Stir, 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 stir. Ooh, my left hand is slow. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, a little more. Is that cool for a sec? Then stir, 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 stir. And again, you don't wanna add this directly without tempering it because if your eggs scramble in the stew, you ruined the entire stew. So at least if they scramble over here, you know, you can just try again, but that's the gist. My spidey senses are tingling <laughs> and I can see that this is taking on like a different kind of something. I can't actually quite pinpoint exactly what's happening. Maybe that it's a little, um, it's a little more homogenous, like it's combined and I can't see any separation between where the egg is and where the cream was because now it's all kind of mixing together. So I'm going to take the plunge 
I'm gonna use my fork still and stir it around in here as we go, but I'm just going to slowly add this. This is like the moment of truth. Please don't scramble. <laughs> oh, it's looking good. Okay, okay. I think we're doing it. <laughs> yes, look at it go. It's looking really good. I see no scramble happening. And continue to stir, stir, stir. I think at this point, though, it would probably just be scrambling if it wasn't properly tempered anyway. All right, now it's time to serve it up. She is looking gorgeous, you guys. It's so creamy. It's so beautiful. So I'm just going to take, I know this is a full lemon, but I'm just gonna squeeze the tiniest little bit right on top, and then top with some parsley. So this is dried parsley. I would definitely recommend fresh parsley whenever possible, but dried will get the trick done. And look at that. All right, the time has come. It is time to try this delicious stew. One thing that I am going to do before I dig in is salt, because I realized that I didn't add any salt, so light little dusting of salt. And then, of course, you can kind of season to taste, but here we go. All right, I'm gonna stir this up too with all the parsley. And then I wanna try and get a little bit of everything. I want the chicken of the woods, I want the leek, I want the pheasant, the potato, I want it all. It's probably gonna be a pretty big bite. Cheers. Mm. Oh. Woo! Woo! She's she's thick. She's creamy. I think I need more salt. I'm glad I added salt, but I need more. Mm -hmm. Another stir. Mm. Wow. I've never had a sauce or stew quite this thick and creamy. Well, that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to try and recreate this recipe, again, it is on the From Field to Table website. You can check it out there. Awesome job, Chef Albert. It's delicious, it is thick. It definitely fulfills the fall vibes that you want from a stew. So give it a try. Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to the Outdoor Solutions from Field to Table YouTube channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. I don't know, but I can't stop eating this right now.